<laughs> All right, perfect. Well, thank you for joining us today uh, for our Innovation HR podcast. Today we'll be talking about how to create a robust and engaging onboarding process for both remote and site-based uh, employees. My name is Bianca Clifton and I'm a director at Sterning HR, a specialist executive HR recruitment firm. I'm joined here today by the lovely Kate Woods, People and Culture Manager at M-Wave. Kate is a degree qualified HR professional who commenced her HR career in 2012. She has worked with predominantly SME organisations across both the blue and white collar workforce with a focus on employee relations, building capability, OD and engagement. Kate is the newly appointed People and Culture Manager for M-Wave and is responsible for HR operations and setting and driving the strategic HR agenda. If you're a gamer, you'll be familiar with M-Wave. They are Australia's leading online tech retailer and a well-renowned amongst PC enthusiasts and the gaming community. They've been established for 15 years and are set to expand significantly over the next few years, hence them appointing Kate into the people and culture manager position. They currently employ around 150 employees. Uh, now, the reason for today's podcast, I've invited Kate today to talk about her recent remote onboarding experience with M-Wave because it was such a success, both from Kate's experience and um, the business's experience as well. Um, there are a lot of organisations and HR teams struggling with this at the moment. And I think what makes Kate's story even more encouraging and interesting is that she was onboarded into the business, um, into the MY business, and they didn't have a HR function. So it was in, executed by a pretty impressive CFO, Jeff Greenberg, who understands the importance and positive business impacts that come with an engaged workforce. Um, so without further ado, uh, welcome Kate, and thank you for joining me today. Hi Bianca, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming along. No problem at all. Um, now, as you and I have discussed, there's a pre and post component to getting the onboarding experience right and getting it right is pivotal to the success and retention of employees. Can you tell us about the experience you've recently had with M-Wave and why you think from a obviously a candidate or an employee perspective why it was so successful but also putting your HR hat on as well um, how you think it, um, why you think it's been such a success and kind of break that down um, into um, the different areas for us. Yeah, absolutely. So look, I think for me, it was really, I guess, from the onset, it was having a really seamless recruitment process. That was number one. And that was all the way through from application, progression of the first and second interview, and really getting, I guess, the critical feedback um, across that first and second interview. I was really lucky to be engaged by a fantastic and specialised agency such as Sterney and working with a fantastic um, recruiter like yourself, Bianca, which really, I guess, added um, an element of having really clear, transparent feedback in that process. Mm. It allowed me to really connect with M-Wave. So really understanding those interview processes, I got a really good understanding around, you know, who they were, what they do. I was able to meet with the leaders in the business, um, being Jeff CFO, but also our CEO as well, um, and hearing their views around the business too. Um, it also came down to really, I guess, being able to connect with the brand and the business itself. So I think for me, it was my first interview. I remember walking in on site and seeing the showroom and seeing all the fantastic technology. You know, our vision is to be the leading destination for tech and game oh. shoppers. Um, so that really supported it as well in that process. Um, and I think it, then it really came down to receiving a timely offer. So that came mm. down to, you know, really pushing through my reference checks and getting that offer, you know, after the second interview quite quickly. Mm. Um, you know, it cut down that process of worrying, you know, whether or not I had the job or not. So that was really fantastic as well. Mm. And I think just cutting in with that pace there, when organisations are able to act that swiftly, 
um, there's no doubts. There's no seeds of doubts that get implanted along that way. No. Um, so even just that pre-experience that you have, that you've mentioned, um, it's already creating a really good setup for then being onboarded into the organisation. Oh, absolutely. You're not you're not waiting. You know, some you, some interview processes you know are quite long, and that's where it starts. You know, have I got the role or where am mm. I going? It, it does that. That shorter process is really key. Um, the other piece for me was from the get go. I had the position document, so I knew I understood um, the the role and the responsibilities and the expectation. Um, mm. And I learned about the company and I knew about the role, so it was really that information sharing around what the role was, responsibilities, um, and really being able to connect that into the business and what mm. you know they wanted to see. Um, that was really key. I think the other piece and probably one of the most important steps in my onboarding experience was really about engagement and communication mm. as well. Mm. Um, and that was from my leader being Jeff. Um, you know, it really set the tone for the type of organisation that I was coming into and what I was going to expect from my leadership team as well. Um, so... It was things like getting a really great welcome. Even before I commenced, you know, I had phone calls, text messages. Um, there was feedback around what was being organised for my first week. So that stuff's really gold because I knew yeah. it sort of, I guess, minimised my uncertainty but actually really, I guess, brought about um, the time that, you know, they were organised and ready for me to come on board and that really welcomed me into the organisation. I think that mm. stuff is really, really important to do rather mm. than just, you know, waiting for the first day and that new employee starting. That yeah. was really, really key. And when you think about it, really, um, it's just communication. Oh, so absolutely. it doesn't need to be anything sophisticated. No. Jeff's just keeping you in the loop Um and obviously letting you know that he's thinking about you and that they're preparing for you to come into the business. Yeah. Um, so, again, just in terms of having that as a starting point already, you're feeling um, engaged and part of the organisation. And that doesn't take a lot of time. No. On his it, end in terms of the, yeah, yeah. And I guess, the, look, the other piece there is and not in every role you're going to have a specialised agency doing that, but also, you know, that connection point with with yourself when I was going through mm -hmm. that process, you know, you were checking in two weeks before I was starting, the first week before I was starting, and then checking in the week after I started. Just, I'm calling you every oh, day pretty much, <laughs> but, yeah. But from a business, so from a business perspective, really yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. You're not going to have that, obviously, you're not going to have a specialised recruit yeah. for every role, but that really supported me when you have that opportunity as well. Um, and then finally, which I think is really a, a, key, a key piece that some organisations do miss, is having all the resources that I needed. Mm to do my job, but to do it well from day dot. So I had my IT equipment, had all my system access, I had my, all my IT equipment couriered to me the week before. Mm. Um, so I was set up and I was ready yeah. to go from day dot. And that yeah. was really exciting. Um, you know, that for me, you know, even just opening everything up and getting it ready was really exciting. It really, you know, for me from day one, that supported me in being able to do my role. And that can make a big difference as well. Like the individuals that we place into organisations and I'll talk to them on their first day and they still haven't been set up, um, it just makes people feel, I think, a, a little bit lost and not having that, uh, feeling a bit unstructured. So I think, um, and obviously with MWave, you would have got all the bells and whistles as well. So. I was very lucky in that department, <laughs> I was. But I think it does reinforces, you know, to the point that they didn't have a, a PMC function. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't need all those bells and whistles to no. to really support that onboarding process, and I think that's what stood out to me. Um, mm. You know, if you if you plan and you and you have a, a process in place, you know, that works really well. Mm. And then, what about in terms of so then that's pre, so then post coming yeah. on board? What did that look like there in terms of kind of stepping it out um, with the different touch points there? Yeah. Absolutely. So from day one, I had a wonderful introduction and welcome from my leader, Jeff. Um, you know, he also then communicated my role and the purpose of my role to the wider business. Yeah. Um, and that 
it was all the way down from the board of directors, our leadership team and our frontline yeah. staff. And I had some beautiful messages actually from our team, yeah. which was fantastic. Um, the other piece was, yeah, around those connection points. So for one, it was with Jeff, you know, he set up regular meetings with me, touch base with me in the first few weeks to track my progress and to check in to see how I was going. I had regular one-on-ones. He provided me with lots of key information and insights um, and that really supported me. Um, What's been really helpful is just having that sense of inclusiveness, having those regular meetups via teams, phone conversations, including me and really key correspondence, um, all those things and having a two-way feedback process has, has mm. been very beneficial. Mm. Um, the other piece for me was then around having those connection points to my stakeholders. So obviously in mm. HR role, that's really key and critical. Mm. Um but it gave me an understanding around who's who in the zoo and connecting me across the business. So that was done through introduction sessions. Um, I was invited to leadership meetings um, and that really supported me in starting to build up my relationships with those really key people across the business and it's still happening at the moment because I'm yeah. quite new. So you'd be part of the management online management meetings and then... Um, then you would organise to have online catch-ups individually with those key stakeholders as well. Correct. Yeah. That's and right. you've got your one-on-one catch-ups um, with Jeff that are happening. They're weekly. We- right. Weekly, yeah. yeah. And in terms exactly. of the, I guess, the key things that you're covering off there, it's more, again, him familiarising you with the organisation and then talking about setting up your role. And Because given it's a newly created role yeah. as well, Absolutely. there's more challenges that come with that there is. because it's, it's being created as you go. So is that something that you and Jeff are doing in those um, in those weekly meetings? Because as opposed to someone who's coming into a position mm. where a role's already been created, they will probably have a little bit more structure there um, yeah. in terms of coming into something that had already existingly been there. There's expectations already from the business. They're kind of jotting in there and um, and. And, and knowing the, the business already has that set in terms of what they're looking for and it's it's because you've got that previous, um, uh, you've, you've got that legacy there. It's, it's yeah, it's a lot easier obviously to come, come on board and um, to kind of take that and run with it, whereas with what you're doing, you're kind of creating it as you go as well. Absolutely. So there's been a couple of, I guess, ways that, we're looking at, you know, developing what that PNC function looks like. Mm. Um, And there's certainly, I guess, there was certainly feedback around what the business and what what the business would like to see um, and projects around that. That's certainly been on the agenda. Um, But I've been really lucky to be able to come in and really look at um, the actual what we need for that PNC Mm. function, get feedback from all stakeholders and that's from our employees upwards and that's been through surveys and things like that but that supported me in being able to build out that pnc strategy which i've just finished mm-hmm. um but there was certainly in those one-on-ones there was conversations there was insights there was resource sharing around what i really needed to also include in that strategy so yeah that's been that's been that's absolutely occurred um but i think back to the point around, you know, those one-on-one meetings, but not just one-on-ones, but having phone conversations and things like that. That yeah. communication sharing, that two-way communication sharing, information sharing, if you like, um, has been really key and really critical yeah. and has supported um, me being able to come into the role and really, I guess, look at what the business need, what the business needs are, but supported me hardly in that onboarding process. Yeah, and I think even so, more so remotely as well because, you know, when you're in an office environment and you, you'll, you'll, you'll get up out of your desk and you'll go and ask something if you have a question, um, whereas you won't necessarily pick up the phone to ask that question. And I'm getting that mm-hmm. feedback from a lot of individuals um, who have recently been onboarded into organisations where um, they're not having that um, ongoing communication mm. um, or they're not feeling that they can pick up the phone and do that so therefore uh, they're just not getting to pick up things as quickly or to learn as quickly and they're also feeling isolated because of that so I think what's more of a focus now in the remote environments is just having more of those conversations with Jeff making himself available all the time and making you feel 
comfortable that you can pick up the phone and talk to him for whatever it is. It's going to um, allow you to um, absorb things a lot faster and get into your role a lot faster and feel more confident yeah. a lot faster as well. Yeah, Absolutely. I think that's a really good point because COVID's really challenged us to think outside mm. the box around that onboarding process. And I think I've been very lucky I've had the support and those communication lines open not just with Jeff but other stakeholders mm. across the business and I've known because I've learned that from Dave Dodd and Jeff's connected me through mm. you know if I've got a question or if I've got a problem or if there's something I need to find out I know who to go to or I know who to engage um but I guess that support has really it, I guess it's provided me with the ability to add value and input from Day Dodd um and having that support from my leader, it's really built the foundation for me to be able to forge ahead, achieve and add value to M-Wave. Yeah, perfect. All right, so you're talking about um, Jeff and the senior, um, the, the ELT and your senior stakeholders as well. What else from there? Yeah, so I think the next piece for me was around learning and learning about the business and understanding our products, our people, our processes, our procedures, all that stuff's really important. And mm. not just the stuff that, you know, is relevant to the PNC um, yep. agenda. Um, so one of the interesting things, and I think this this is, I guess, really has been really great for my knowledge for the, around mm. the business is I've actually been included in a lot of sessions um, that could be meetings, that could be conversations with, you know, our other departments. So a great example I've been included in um, with our customer experience team and mm. learned around, you know, what their processes are there, what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you know. What are they, what's working really well in those teams? What are their challenges? Um, you know, but just understanding around what they're doing operationally has been mm. the key. Um, so and was that, stru was that structured? Was that planned in terms of your induction process or is that something that's just come up? That's something that's just come up. But yeah. that's been but, but the environment has enabled that. Yeah. It has. It has. It's but you can also structure that in that um, induction yeah. process. Yeah, those Absolutely. different touch points to the different areas. Mm. Absolutely. If you've got a really great um, planned induction or well, mm. great, yeah, induction um, process, you're able to really, I guess, connect through and put in place those meetings those sessions with that new startup coming on board mm. um, and that really supports in their learning around the business around their role around their responsibilities how it fits into the big picture yeah and how that especially in hr you Absolutely. need yeah you need to know that you need to know how you can support those areas um, to perform at their best and you need to understand their business to be able to do that. Absolutely. So I think that's been something I've been included in a couple of those different types of sessions and some pre-planned, some not. Um, and I think that's been something that I've really enjoyed but also has supported me in that onboarding mm. process. So I think the final piece for me um, in that onboarding process is that I've had the trust and the accountability from my leader. So I think, you know, starting from home during lockdown, during COVID, I've been homeschooling a six-year-old, which has been very challenging at times. I've been really lucky to have had the trust placed in me from my leader and really had the flexibility to set my own way of working. Mm. I think it's really important um, that with that comes accountability to perform, but also to perform to a higher standard. It's two-way mm. street. But I think that for me has been really key and really, I guess, has been that final piece in the puzzle mm. in that on. And process. have you find found that that's been woven through the business in terms of how they operate as an overall um, culture and expectation of the business, or have you found that that's more so just come from um, your key or, or the CFO there? Yeah, great question. Um, from both, yeah. it's certainly set within the culture of the organisation, and I guess current times as well with COVID, you know, you've got to trust your mm. workforce. We, there, we've got a large majority of our staff working from home at the moment, but we also have on-site staff too. Um, but in addition to that, absolutely, that has been woven through from my mm. leader too. Um, and that trust has been yeah. there. Which is a great on. environment to come into. It is fantastic and really enlightening, I yeah. think, as well. It's, exci it's encouraging. All right. So what else? So I think the other pieces for me and really easy stuff that organisations can do 
um, is having an all chart, mm. you know, a well-defined rocket all chart. So you understand the structure of the company, um, you know, who sits at the heads of departments and branching down from there. So in having that readily available for you to review, I think that supports mm. you. And I think finally, which is really key and can sometimes get missed and this stuff's gold, is actually knowing where to access mm. stuff. So having access to the company internet, answering questions, you know, how does an employee get paid? When do they get paid? How frequently? How do I submit an expense? Where do I park? You know, how can I update my employee details? All that stuff is really, really relevant. Mm. Um, I think that's really key. And I think the final, the final one, which actually that we've probably is one of the most important pieces as well, is understanding the vision, mission, and the values of that organisation. And that sets the behaviours, um, well, the expected behaviours for that new starter. And I think that needs to really um, be driven from the top down. That's so important mm. that it sets, it sets a standard, it sets an expectation. Mm. And on the, other piece, on the other side of that, you start setting up that relationship where that new starter buys into mm. that behavior they buy into that culture they buy into that vision mission and values and I think that coming from I can speak to my experience with M-Wave you know that is really shown through Jeff my leader um and and that has really I guess is really key and really important Mm. um so putting on your HR hat what do you think um are the main hurdles to putting this type of process in place uh, and what would you recommend in terms of um, ways to overcome those hurdles? Yeah. So I think some of the key things as to, I guess, some of the challenges on getting that onboarding process mm. right is really, I guess, time, resources across the business, and that can be time from other employees or from the leaders of the business, mm. follow through of leaders of that new starter. So I think... You know, really being able to have those ongoing conversations, ensuring that that open feedback is happening. Um, sometimes, you know, you see situations where that you just throw someone out to the middle of nowhere and expect them to sink or swim, and you know that's not going to work for anyone that's new to the business. Mm. Um, and then I think just generally BAU. I mean, everyone's got their role to do. Everyone's got their responsibilities. Mm. Um, you know balancing that with a new starter who's got lots of questions and lots of uncertainty that can be really really challenging Mm. um but i think the point that's really really important is when you look at the time and the Mm. cost that's invested into onboarding someone new and getting them set up well the return on investment yeah. is huge if you get that yeah. right. Um, you're more likely to retain them. You're more likely to engage them in the business. You're more likely to build up that information, um, their knowledge um, across the business and for their role and their responsibilities. Um, and that ultimately sets them mm. up to perform but also to perform to a really high expectation mm. as well. I think with this type of thing, you've really got one shot. So you do. Um, you and with what I think in terms of um, kind of some of the key points that you can go through after this and just kind of articulate on um, how you would overcome those different hurdles that you've just mentioned. Um, I think that if you have a clear, you don't need all the bells and whistles, and that's a beautiful thing about M Wave. They didn't have all the bells and whistles in terms of a like a highly functioning HR team. You've got some like the systems there, but it's it's not just the systems. It's definitely just not the systems in terms of um, the onboarding process and what makes it successful. It's that engagement um, from different areas within the business and like um, like we mentioned, all, all the other areas in terms of setting that up. But when you break it down, it's actually you can create a process that you can use across your organisation, obviously, um, depending on the workforce, you might need to customise a few of the key areas of different touch points or what's involved if you're kind of looking at blue and white collar. But you sh- in terms oh, of that process, yeah. you should be able to create a pretty robust, um, great onboarding process that you can then roll out across the organisation. And I think once you get the business engaged, um, 
and them seeing the benefits in terms of cost and time to getting it right, then it just becomes um, it just becomes the norm in terms of how you bring people on. Um, right. So it's it's not rocket science. It's just having um, seeing the benefits of it and having those key people to um, be the different touch points along the way. Um, which, yeah, just makes such a difference in terms of the experience that someone has, like you've had with M-Wave. So when you think about those hurdles that you've mentioned, mm. how what would you recommend in terms of um, overcoming some of those? Yeah. So I think for me, for number one, would it be having a really clearly, clearly defined but an interactive onboarding process for new starters? Um, and that shouldn't just be in the first, you know, week. That should be across the first, I would say, 30 to 90 mm. days at a minimum for that new starter. And to your point, you're absolutely going to have, have um, you know, your overarching onboarding or induction process, but it may differ for the department. I mean, great example at M-Wave, we have our warehouse mm. staff, but we also have our corporate staff as well. But they can sit in one general um, overarching induction session which we're going to be looking at designing for the business very soon um, but then we're also going to be looking at an additional you know warehousing induction program specific to the role for that business so that's one example um, so I think having a really clearly clearly defined and interactive onboarding process um, that drives communication between the leader and the employee I think secondly having really dedicating time and energy to the new starters in that onboarding mm. journey um, and I think that is that's your comp daily conversations, your informal, your more formal conversations and feedback, you know, showing them how to do things, getting them set up in systems and showing them how to actually use those systems, all that sort yeah. of stuff. Um, and really, I guess, then connecting them through the business to those key stakeholders as well. Um I think being able to, you know, welcome them into the business, having touch points, um, regular touch points and including them into, you know, those key leadership meetings, team meetings, all that sort of mm. stuff um, is really Like key. I said, depending on the level, they don't need to be, obviously not everyone is going to be liaising with that leadership team. So for your example, obviously right. you're a key contributor within the organisation, so they're going to bring you into that. But for more junior level positions as well, you've got colleagues, you might set them up with a buddy, um, there's different ways to get them engaged and ingrained into understanding how the business operates and who's who. So I think the third one would be around clarifying the mm. role and responsibilities and setting that expe expectation from the get-go. Mm. Now, I think there's a couple of ways mm. to do that, but I think for me having a really, really good, clearly defined position document around the responsibilities of that role, but also having a clear understanding around what the KPIs for that role mm. are and communicating that to that employee. Um, and obviously that goes through to, you know, your performance management type mm. processes, et cetera, but I think that's really important. And that conversation is being had by their manager with the employee, yeah, or or um, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think your PD certainly from when you start recruiting for a role, it should be designed and mm. developed um, so you can utilise that all the way through from that recruitment talent acquisition process all the way through to when you do um, have that new starter come mm. on board. That's really key. Um, but as well, looking at if we're talking about, you know, um, the values of an organisation, um, the, the leader of that new starter really needs to set expe expectation around behaviours mm. from the get-go and that's leading by example yeah. and I think that's really, really key as well. Um, but that's set all the way down from, you know, your CEOs yeah. all the way through to your frontline staff. Um, so I think setting expectations from the get-go mm. around the role, responsibilities but also behaviours mm. is really important. The next point I think is information sharing. Knowledge is power. It reduces uncertainty for that new starter. It makes their work more meaningful and it really builds their individual knowledge um, and understanding around the company, the role itself. And that has an overall impact on their performance. Mm. 
how, how the next, when you say that, how do you think in terms of what are the different ways that you can do that? Is that through having yeah, catch-ups think, with your team? and? Oh, there's so many ways, 100%. Um, you know, I think that needs to be informal and formal yeah. communication channels, one-on-ones, yeah. team meetings, um, getting into the role and doing on-the-job training. Yeah. Um, it could be involved in town hall meetings. As a whole you could actually do it at any touch points that you've um, articulated, yeah. yep. So just kind of yeah. um, including that um, dialogue into the um, or, already um, the set-up touch points that we've discussed, yep. Absolutely. So I think information sharing across a number of different platforms and methods is really yeah. key. And continual, I think that it goes back to, you know, you're continually learning. But for a new starter, that's probably more so important than it is for someone that's been there for a couple well, of years. Well, it's so overwhelming. Um, and I think when I talk to individuals, it like, doesn't matter what level, whether you're um, a, a HRD or a HR business partner, the challenge is when you're coming into an organisation, you're coming from a previous organisation, you know your stuff as a HR professional, yeah? So you're working in your role, you're executing everything, you know who your key stakeholders are, you know in terms of legislation what's applicable there, you know in terms of culture, policy. And then you come into a new role, you've still got that skill set, you're still a HR professional, but it's very different coming into a new organisation going, okay, well, this is how I worked before. This is now, how, how do I work this way? Or how do I work to in line with the company culture, in line with, with their vision? Um, I might have done this in my previous role, but that's not what I'm doing here. Um, and it's hard to go off in your role and just start operating at the same level that you were operating at. You can't. It doesn't exist. And if you no. don't have that information sharing and that knowledge and that understanding... Um, pretty much you're not able to operate in your role. So it makes you feel helpless and it makes you feel stressed because you're not able to deliver what you're used to delivering. And then also from the business perspective, they, they're they like, well, we, we've got this person in this role. How come they're not operating? Like we've brought them in at this level. Why aren't they operating um, at the level of, of, of what our expectations are? And it's generally... Um, that they haven't been set up right and they don't it's not that they don't have the capability they just don't understand yet how to operate within that type of environment and sharing information and have like knowledge is power and bringing someone in and giving them that opportunity to absorb as much as they can as quickly as they can will only result in them being able to operate more effectively faster for you um well, that's yeah cool. You can make well-informed and educated yeah. decisions and add value. It, it drives your agenda. There's a whole raft of, you know, positive reasons why that information sharing is so important. Um, you know, I think it, and, and in that onboarding process, you know, if you have a really well-defined onboarding process that talks, you know, about the company, who's who, the structure, yeah you know, the products, the services of the organisation, um, all that stuff is the very, the starting stone, I guess, the foundation yeah. of that journey. Yeah. Um, and from that, it's you building. know, you can really start yeah. to connect. That's, yeah, that's it. And I think that's that's really important. Um, but I think understanding around the, the vision, the mission and the values and the expected behaviours mm. um, from day mm. one so mm. well it's going to nip a lot of things um, in the bud by doing that as well isn't it, it? Is. so yeah it is because if you don't know if you're not doing the right thing or you're not following something the right way you know if you haven't been taught that how how else are you meant to know so i think that that's something that's really really key and important for me um especially with any new starter coming on board but for me in this journey it's been really I guess that that certainly um, has shone through and that's been part of my process um, with M-Wave. Um, and I think finally, and this can be for your frontline staff, this can be at your higher level type roles um, all the way through to your, your executive um, team, is having strong leadership. Mm. I think that, that's, that's it's so important. It drives inc inclusivity. Employees feel connected to their leader behaviours are observed from that mm. leader um, by that new starter. It drives up open communication and information sharing 
and finally you get buy-in, mm. therefore the employee on sort of effective of that is that new starter or that new employee is going to feel yeah. valued and they're going to want to stay with the business. And I think that's the pinnacle of what you're looking for in any organisation with um, it being successful and um, being a place where people want to work. It starts, it's top, it starts from the top. Um, so it's about having that buy-in, yeah. But that's what you're all about in terms of HR, isn't it? So, <laughs> And I, I'm glad that you've been able to join an organisation where they see the value in that as well because it's worth pointing out in terms of M-Wave, they've... Um, They've been around for, like we said, nearly 15 years and to not have anyone in HR mm. and have that culture that they have, um, such an engaged culture, um, mm. that's coming from that senior leadership team and um, and and probably the, the founder of the organisation as well. That doesn't just happen. Um, and for a business with very high retention mm. rates um, and very low turnover, yeah. um, that that to me speaks volumes yes. um, to the type of business that you know I've come into, but also you know that's been the culture. That's the reason why our people are staying with us and are not moving on elsewhere is because you know they love mm. the business. the The culture is a positive and engaging mm. culture, and you're right. Without that, P, they haven't had that PMC yeah. function. So I think that in itself speaks volumes as well, um, and makes my job very easy. Well, for now, so as they continue to grow, <laughs> you obviously get to put in the frameworks to support that. Um, but it's good to, I mean, it's fantastic to jo- join an organisation that already sees the value in that. So then you can do what you know needs to be done from a HR perspective um, with that culture and that engagement piece. But um, I'll definitely have to have you come back on because it's actually good timing, like you mentioned, in terms of doing, um, looking at creating that induction um, and onboarding process. So once you do that, we'll have you back on and uh, if that's if that's okay, and then we'll have you kind of talk through um, what that looks like. Because, again, given the size of the business, and the diversity of the workforce as well. I think there's a lot of organisations out there um, who feel, who, who think it probably needs to be really sophisticated and everything that we've just spoken about here, there definitely is process in place, yep, but it it's it's in, it's getting buy-in. It's having those that senior leadership team. It's having those key um, areas across the business, those different touch points. It's getting everyone involved really um to make the onboarding successful so that employee is engaged and not left wondering what's what's happening um, or, or what their mm. role is or their responsibilities are or what the business does because I think with a lot of organizations um when we hear that onboarding isn't done correctly we get feedback straight away and this is what people will say straight away they'll be it'll be maybe one or two weeks um since they've commenced a role and if the onboarding hasn't been done correctly Straight away, they'll be thinking, they'll say things to us like, I'm not sure this is the right role for, for me. I'm not sure this is the right environment. And there can be really good environments. It's just the um, onboarding experience that they've had. Um, they'll say things like, I don't know where I fit in, in the overall organisation structure. I don't know what my role is. Um, and I'm, I'm not having catch up with catch ups with my managers or with my manager. Um, and when we're hearing successful successful stories or feedback, like yourself when you commenced with M Wave, like straight away, like it's, I love, I love this organization. This is where I've always wanted to be. I feel included. I might not know everything, obviously, because you're still learning in terms of, but I feel supported, yeah. and I know that I can pick up the phone, and I know where to go to to find information, um, and and I made the right decision. And, and I'm really excited about um, working with this organisation and, and and you need that commitment um, and that excitement from the employees, the new starters end, because if not, people are going to leave your organisation because they're not feeling supported. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, a great analogy, which I'll use, you know, if you're having a friend over, if you're having someone, you've got the you've got the bottle of wine and the cheese platter out. You know, you're welcome. You're welcoming welcoming them in really positively. Um, so I think that analogy it doesn't need to be a really complicated mm. process, but it can be something that can be engaging, great communication, gives the information that that employee needs to do their mm. job, but to do it well, um, but sets 
the the expectation around culture, the vision, the vision, the yeah. values, um, and you know what they're going to be working in for the next if, across their employee journey. Um, you know, if they're, they're going to have a bad experience in the first week or couple of weeks coming into that business, they're not going to want to stay yeah. with that business long term. And I think that's that's the moral of the yeah. story. And the market's so competitive um, at the moment; people they'll just definitely. leave because people are getting approached. I'm working with people at the moment, and it's not that they've got one offer that they're chasing they've got multiple offers where people are chasing them so um well that's another really good point you know it's it's reputational too um you know you talk to people talk within the market um if you haven't got a good then it's I guess that's yeah. the topic, but you know, really defining your EVP and what you've got to mm. offer as an employer out in the market to make yourself yeah. competitive. Use that as leverage. Um, another part in the story. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, and we're at the moment, we're very lucky. You know, I'm, I've built out the PNC strategy and there's a whole raft of things that we've got on the agenda. It'll be a very action-packed yeah. year, 2022. Um, but part of that part of that strategy is really looking at that onboarding but also looking at BP, our MVP yeah. too and how that reflects to the market. Yeah. Um, so if you've got candidates or new employees coming in, starting with the business and walking out quite mm. quickly, you know, they're going to talk to their mm. colleagues. They're going to talk to their friends, and that sets the tone in the market. Mm. And people are generally more likely if it's a, a bad experience. It's either a bad experience you talk about it, or a really amazing experience. Even just yeah. middle ground, there's a lot of you can do a lot of good things um, and still get someone on board and engaged. It, it doesn't need to. You don't need to charm the pants off everyone all the time, but make them feel like they want to be part of, of the team and, and the organisation and, and know what, what their role is in that. Um, all right. Well, thank you. It's um, We'll have you back because I want to hear all about your EVP as well. <laughs> I'm sure it will be good, yeah. So thank you, Kate, for sharing your wisdom. It's been such a great discussion today. Um, we'll have a downloadable resource um, for an onboarding flow chart as well for anyone who's interested um, or needs a little bit more um, kind of direction around it. Uh, and just lastly, I'm always interested, tell me what books, so in terms of book recommendations that you have, so a, a business a business book that you would recommend and um, a personal book that you would recommend. One of your favourites. Favourites, okay. So I think for me... From a business, a business book, it would certainly be Jacinda Ardern's Leading with Empathy. And that's purely because I really admire her leadership qualities. She's humble, she's empathetic, and she has a very humanistic approach to people. And I really admire that approach. Um, I think personal, um, definitely Trent Dalton, Boy Swallows Universe, beautifully written Aussie novel. Um, you know, I've got a lot of kids' books as well. So <laughs> no, that's perfect. <laughs> they're, my they're my pick, yeah. I'm I actually cool. need some more um, some more fiction because I read a lot of non-fiction, so I might check out Boy Swallows Universe. So beautiful yeah. book. Definitely recommend. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure being on this podcast. So thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Bianca. Bye. Bye.